we're going to see a lot of damage a lot of damage but that damage is not going to wipe homo sapiens out at right. this point i used to say when we started out 40 years ago that we have 20 30 years in 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 hand well let me put it to you like this the ipcc and all the scientists of the world and all the economists of the world and the politicians and the ceos and the big business people of the world can get together distill all their knowledge into one brain they still don't know how to handle this problem and the problem will have to be handled sadly by our children to whom all we can do is arm them with information arm them with values don't be happy with how much you consume be happy with what you have distribute resources equitably because if you're on a ship and you start drinking champagne and and start throwing cakes out of the window while your crew is sitting there starving there'll be mutiny so if you want peace in the world distribute equitably the resources of the planet which means that if the sun is shining in a decentralized fashion don't centralize that sun in just one desert and send it off back to your industrial friends mm. if the water rain is falling everywhere don't make these huge dams because those dams are just going to cause salinity they are going to cause floods they are going to cause droughts and they are going to deny the poor or the unempowered the right to the water which the rain was supposed to give them so all these things equity justice good health happiness peace all these things security what do you want as a parent i mean i'm a grandparent what do i want i don't want for my children great mahals and things like this i want them to be safe and i want them to be happy and i want people to be able to a city is an act of faith and so is this planet i can't these 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 childish borders that we've drawn and said that this is our territory and you cannot come in one inch well birds don't know this the rain doesn't know this the fires don't know this they will spread from canada and they'll go to north america to to uh, to the us you know the seas don't know this you can if you poison the seas on one side and you kill all let's say the dolphins and you kill all, all manner of species over here and the migration stops is going to affect things elsewhere again i'm no, going but, on a little too long but is it um is this now finally hitting home because initially uh, you know the industrialized nations are the ones who put us in this place india has always said but it's our problem our creation and you got to let us um you know reach your level of um i don't you know progress and and so we need to also uh, you know industrialize and reach your level and then we can start uh, you know stopping our emissions but now these so called rich industrialized nations it's hit home their their people are are seeing heat waves uh, i i think the germans have been shocked uh, out of their wits to see their villages being ravaged by floods uh, i saw a couple of interviews where you you know people were like but you know this doesn't happen here this is this is not a third world country do you think now these powerful nations who really have it they have the power to actually make a difference do you think it's hitting home enough there are no ignorance avarice arrogance this is not the private property of just the developed nations industrial nations you look at all the other nations everybody around the world is biggest problem is everybody thinks somebody else has caused the problem mm. somebody else should solve the problem but we are all on the same damn titanic so it doesn't make any difference you know the point is that you can't sit in a plane i keep giving these analogies you can't sit But in a plane analogies. in the business yeah. section yeah you can't sit in a plane in the business section in row 5 and say that okay row 5 is smoking but row 1 2 3 4 are not because your smoke's going to travel there hmm. so in this biosphere what we've got to do is first we've got to understand that look flow with the tide of nature let's come to the solutions let's talk about what i tell pretend for a minute that you're 12 years old tarana and what i'm saying to you is this that like a cut on your hand nature can fix itself everything can be fixed we are not beyond gone beyond the point where the oceans cannot come back to life of course we have to clean up the plastic that we've thrown in the oceans of course we've got to stop manufacturing 
chlorinated compound materials like PVC plastics, for instance, because when you burn them, there are dioxins and furans given off. Forget about climate change. I'm talking about the fact that toxins that we are releasing into the atmosphere, we'll have to be able to stop them. So what we will, what we expect that the children will understand from us is that if you know that something is dirty, would you drink it? No. If you know that it's poison, will you drink it? No. Well, your elders, they don't know so much as you do, kids. They don't, you know, when you grow old like me, sometimes you can't hear properly, sometimes you can't see properly. So you go and tell somebody, ah, uncle, you just dropped that cigarette there. I thought you might be able to use the butt. Please, I, I'm giving it back to you, you know. But be polite, be nice, yeah. they'll get the message. Put the message back to the elders that like a, like a cut on your skin, the earth will heal itself, but leave it alone. Jago, you had said that right in the beginning. Leave it alone. I mean, everything can be fixed. The nature is a self-replicating, self-healing organism. The whole planet is an organism. It's not as though an ant is different from you, is different from a bird, is different from the dinosaurs that died down. Take a lesson from Darwin. I would like to sit down one day and put the economists of the world and the politicians of the world and the big businesses of the world in a room and tell them to read up just one or two passages from Darwin. What he said was, Charles Darwin, he said, it's not the strongest that will survive. It's not the most intelligent that will survive. It is the most adaptable that will survive. Mm. So if we adapt, now we're being faced with circumstances, floods, droughts, mm. disease. We'll come to the pandemics as well. These, these diseases won't go away if the cause of the disease is not stopped. And in the case of the pandemic specifically, the cause was, hold your breath, the wildlife trade. It's only a yes. $40 billion trade. But in that trade, animals that lived with their viruses locked down in their ecosystems were taken out and brought into our ecosystem. Now, with their ecosystems gone, they've now come to our ecosystems and we are their prey. Yeah. So we have meat. Yeah. Actually, human beings are just meat. You know, A virus is not... Judging you, good, bad, indifferent, Tarana, you're a good person, I won't hurt you. Jagu, you're a lousy guy, I, you, I'm coming for you. It's not, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. So we have, to, we have to understand this, that the system will repair itself, but first you've got to stop doing the damage, back down, tone down, observe more, be a little more respectful, think a little longer, you may think that five years is a long time. It isn't a long time. You may think 50 years is a long time. It isn't a long time. Your children will be alive then. You know, my children, my grandchildren will be alive. Sure. If you start thinking for the long term, your own life improves today. And that is the reality of this biosphere. It can fix itself. Everything will be all right. How much we want to be traumatized by our actions and, or rather our, our mistakes and our stupidity is up to us now. And do we want to learn the lessons? If we want to learn the lessons, we can. There's still time. If we don't want to learn the lessons, that 30, 40 year gap that I used to talk about in the 80s, hmm. I'm talking now three years, two years, four years, five years. Wow. That's the maximum time we have. The tipping points are very, very near. And many, many ecosystems, the tipping points have been already reached. In the Arctic, forget about Sea level rise. Everybody thinks when the ice melts, the sea level will rise. Of course it will. But the methane will be released from there. Methane is several times more powerful as a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. So if we, if we just ignore all this and saying, no, 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 it's okay. We will do this, we will do technology, we will do carbon capture, we will do this. Are the best carbon capture is our forests, our wetlands. Yes. These yes. are the things without spending any money, we can have the carbon captured down there. Your house plant is doing that job. Uh, but to that everything that you have said, it creates an awareness. Now, this is not an awareness that doesn't already exist. But your reiteration of it completely helps. Now, what everything that you explained to us in terms of ecosystems, in terms of the planet, is big picture. On an individual level, yes, some of us recycle, some of us don't use plastic straws. Some of you, some of us use electric cars. But surely on an individual level and the impact that each individual will have cumulatively will make a difference. 
what more can we do i don't want to live in sea world <laughs> vote ah. for the right people vote the ah. right people in you'll get the right results vote for the wrong people in you might as well seal your own fate and write your own epitaph bitu i'm a little bit of a pessimistic over there i can't see the right person <laughs> they are there they are there yeah. and even then i'll tell you nature has its own balance and the and the rules of the rainforest exist in the political system as well people who you think are your enemies today will be your friends tomorrow because they want to be in the seat but if there is enough public outcry and if there is enough real research done to understand that the young are not going to forgive or forget or vote for the wrong people then suddenly you will find it's already there there are nips and tugs and things like this but the guys who are holding on claws and fangs showing onto their onto their casket of gold they can't see they're blind they can't see behind them they've got yes men around them to jo matlab ki chamche hain wo bolte jayenge ki bhai they saab aap bahut hi sahi kar rahe ho are he's going to lose the next election and it may seem like we are powerless but at the end we are finite i'm 72 years old i'm not going to live for another 20 30 years i'll be gone and with me will go my generation and i will not mourn my generation's loss because my generation is directly responsible for aggravating accelerating quickening the whole process of damaging the future and it need not be like that it need not be like that the pandemic showed us yeah by the way the pandemic was born in a bat probably transferred to, to a, a pangolin, pangolin which is the most traded mammal in the world yeah. from there it went into a human system but i mean in one in one form or the other if we allow the ecosystems to come back if we allow dam catchments to be restored if we allow wetlands to come back and not consider them as wastelands if we recognize that mangroves are actually infrastructures yeah. grasslands are infrastructures forests are infrastructures glaciers are infrastructures then why would we damage one permanent infrastructure for a momentary 5 year 7 year 10 year 15 year return dene wala infrastructure which could be a road here a dam here a coal mine there it just makes good sense for us right now to slow the pace and it won't happen with finger wagging the market is already recognizing you look at all the oil majors in the world you look at all the oil coal gas guys they are making a bee line for solar they are making a bee line for wind why because they want what comes out of there they don't particularly like solar panels or windmills they want the power but they're making the same mistake now that power should be on every rooftop in the world that power should be in the corner of every farm in the world they are centralizing everything in one place taking 1000 square kilometers damaging its uh, the arid zone biodiversity and then channeling it back to the same people who are either the rich or the more powerful or the guys with guns and leaving the other people bereft i just never thought of it like that it's not going to work so um you know i i was a uh, i was excited but uh, now i don't know whether i should be or not you, you know in iceland um, uh, i think just yesterday uh, the largest carbon dioxide sucking plant has been opened and and uh, because the uh, ipcc climate report the last one basically said it's not just enough for us to not emit uh, greenhouse emissions anymore we need to suck the carbon dioxide out of the air already and and mitigate disaster like that um so i i was excited but apparently even that is not enough so even though there are it's not that, that is not enough tarana it's not that that is not enough of course those things have to be done but that's like uh, if you pardon the expression pissing on a forest fire you know R- really mm-hmm. what you got to do is that you have got to allow the ecosystems to come back when that comes back the best solar panel in the world is a leaf or a blade of grass or the phytoplankton in the sea these are the ones that absorb the sunlight and they cannot grow without pulling carbon dioxide down they can take nitrogen they can take minerals they can take water from the soils and from the earth etc but carbon dioxide they can only get from up there 
So if we want to bring the carbon dioxide back, then we've got to restore the ecosystems. The dam catchments, when they come back, they'll damp the rain, they'll fill the aquifers, which hold more water than all our dams put together. They will uh, bring the carbon dioxide down and begin the slow process of bringing the, car the climate back into balance. These are called nature-based solutions. And the catchword right now is rewilding. Allow the planet to rewild itself. And rewilding is not going into the Amazon and, of course, don't cut the Amazon down and don't cut Buster down and don't cut the Western Ghats down. But the fact of the matter is that even cities need to do this. This whole business of trimming, 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 everything, cutting down, taking one tree, eight tree, two trees, four trees, five trees. No. We want small pockets, even if there are 100 square meters of wild pockets in cities. These mm. gather dust, they damp sound, they allow water to go back down into aquifers, they cool the city, they are air conditioners, our rooftops. Either we should generate power there or we should grow food there. Why should a why should we have traffic islands on which we've got ornamental plants on which we are spraying pesticides? The Mughals used to do that. You know, we can curse the Mughals for all the violence. But when they built the Grand Trunk Road, what did they plant there? There were mango trees, there were imli trees, there were, you know, it was fruit trees, it was food, it was rest, it was shade. Mm. The whole world needs to take lessons from yesterday to negotiate tomorrow. And every child under the age of 12, virtually every child knows that. So Sanctuary, the, the Sanctuary Nature Foundation, we're running now an adult literacy program. Um, not adults teaching adults, children teaching adults. Wow. That, you know, this is how it works. So we reach out to a million children. That, that's in our network. We call it Kids for Tigers. And the tiger you see behind me is just a metaphor. He's not an animal. He's just a metaphor for all of nature, like the flag of my country, India, is not a piece of cloth which is colored orange, white, and yellow with a chakra. I, that's not it. Hmm. It represents the it represents the notion of India, yeah. the idea yeah. of India, and patriotism. The best way, I would say, environmental protection is patriotism in action, and my patriotism extends beyond India. It goes across the world, and I say that we are on this small blue marble. All history took place here. The Mohenjo-Daro, the Vedas, all the thoughts, everything happened here. The Roman civilization, the Chinese, everything happened here. We're just tiny little specks. A little humility, a little slowing of pace, a little smile, a little happiness. Bitu should be happy that Tarana is happy. Tarana should be happy that Jagu is happy. And the world comes back. It will fix itself before you know what's happened. Exactly the way... The pandemic showed us when we locked down. Skies turned yeah. blue. The yes. Yamuna, you could see down four feet into the Yamuna. People living in Jalandhar and, and parts which were, they had never seen the mountains before, could see them 60 kilometers away. Yeah. What does it mean? It just means that, look, it just means nothing. Nothing other than the fact that nature can fix itself. So I don't know how much more time we have, but I'd like to say this to the children. Your elders need help. They are good people. They are not bad people. They're just slightly blinded by a false story that you children need bridges and you need roads and you need diamonds and you need gold. You can't eat any of those things. What you need is clean air that does not pollute your lungs. You need clean water that does not ruin your digestive system. You need clean food that is nutritious. And you need to have a world in which birdsong is your predominant audio experience. Not car honking, not gully buckoing, not drum beating that how great we are, how bad you are. Well, really, that's all that the children will do. There's not much more. Well, where well, the children of today seem to be listening, and and they uh, they they're definitely a lot more active than I guess we were uh, when we were their age. Uh, the message has hit home. I don't I don't know any teenager who's a climate change denier. Um, so the change is here. The change you've been uh, 
fighting for and advocating for the last 30 40 years are you feeling a little bit reassured that now now the generation is is indeed ready to take on uh, your responsibility and keep keep the fight going i am feeling more than just a little reassured uh, i am feeling very confident that yeah. the people doing the damage their ability to do damage is being taken away from them the oil yeah. coal gas business is they just zombies dead men walking people are putting money into it all that money is going down the drain the banks will not lend the insurance companies will not insure and i think that a combination of the fact that what you speak of the young people understanding and the older generation getting a tired b getting a bad name and c not being refueled to do more damage where is the cusp i'm just still saying 3 4 years please take it from me if you have any money in oil coal gas take it out now because it's going to be useless 10 <laughs> years from today so we learn about the environment as well as investment tips <laughs> yeah well and it's not Don't that the coal sense. will vanish jagu it's not that coal will vanish it's not that oil will vanish it's not that uh, you know it's not that these things won't be used we don't want to expand them we want them to yes. contract to the point where only what can't be done the other way can be done by this and the biosphere has learned to use uh, adapt to that it's yeah. your one last analogy it's like your liver you like your single malt so you like your thara or you like your pawa or whatever it is you have it have it have it the liver will take care of a lot of things it will even take care of the damage up to 75% you go beyond that and you don't have to take another drink after that the liver will say mai to gaya jao bye bye mm-hmm. but if you allow it rest the liver will regenerate that's the planet the analogy of the river and uh, the liver and the planet is that it can regenerate the seas can still regenerate everything can come back but for god's sake stop doing this stop doing this nobody will remember you well for the fact that you built a 10 you know 10 times taller building or a 50 times taller statue or a much wider road or a biggest dam in the world this testosterone ridden development ambition two mm. people two two sets parts of humanity can change that one is children and the other is women i think it's about time men were put to pasture actually here here <laughs> Bitto, thank you so much. That was one fabulous. It is always a pleasure talking to you, but also insightful. And I'm glad instead of the general chess beating that we generally tend to read about in the papers, we're also getting solutions for us as well as the future generations. And I cannot appreciate uh, that enough, and that you took out the time to speak to us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jagu, and thank you, Tarana. It was a pleasure. It was always a pleasure speaking with you people. We shall prevail. We, we shall indeed. Bitu, as we leave, show everyone the power of that vote. <laughs> Wait, I'll show how it's done. I don't know if I'm doing it on the right finger or not, but there it is. There it is. That's it. That's it. And everyone watching this so far, wondering what can you do that? Yes, please don't use straws and please don't use plastic and don't yes. buy extra yes. things and don't destroy uh, the environment. But most importantly, vote right, vote right. That is the big power that we have. Use it. Thank you, Bitu. Thank you, Jagu. Thank you, dear viewer, for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, turn that bell icon on, and come back for more of these episodes right here. So far, so good on the Jagu and Tarana channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, bye. Bye bye. Bye.